Hello, my friends. Hello, my life warriors, wherever you are in the world. Welcome to the Day In, Day Out podcast. Woo! Today on the podcast, I am very lucky, privileged to have Dr. Maricel Capajan. Yes. I love it. There you did a go. great job. Yes. <laughs> I got it. Yes. Yes. Uh, now, yes. Uh, she is a former uh like faculty member of the University of Miami, as well as a TED speaker, talks on leadership, self-improvement, as well as many other things. How are you today, lady? I am incredibly blessed and fantastic today. I'm glad you're blessed. I'm glad you're feeling fantastic. And like, you know what? I have to say, you are like, how can I say... Like, uh, you're kind of a, not a survivor, but you're rough and tough. And you've like, yeah, you've fought through many of things to rise up high. Because at the age of 17, was it? You mm-hmm. were homeless. Is this mm-hmm. correct? So I will, I will say something because, you know, I love to talk about mindset, right? So uh, I wouldn't say I'm tough, but I've been through tough situations. Mm. So I don't like to make it part of my identity because what we say about us, it becomes our reality. So I'm a person who have gone through tough situations. Okay, but why would you want to say you're tough? Like oh, I'm fine. I mean, being tough is fine. Yeah. I just, I am a person who's always evolving and changing. Mm-hmm. And sometimes I like to be soft. Sometimes oh. I like to be taken care of. And sometimes I like to be tough. So it depends on, the what's my energy for the day but i try to stay as neutral as possible and have and and then talk about the situation because i went through a tough situation i see so you're like the mighty philosopher shrek you're like an onion full of layers yes i'm a full of layers and i just take it day in and day out like you say ah there you go there you go but this is the thing like to go from being i have to ask because Yes, 17, homeless. And Mm -hmm. look, today you sit here, proud doctor, ex-faculty member of the University of Miami. And yes, teaching people leadership, mindset, thoughtfulness. How did did you get yourself into that situation? And how did you get yourself out of being homeless to start your sort of journey? So that's, uh, I love the question uh, because it will bring back so many memories Mm -hmm. uh, of my beginnings, right? So before that happened, I should, you know, say that I grew up in the Dominican Republic. So I grew up with my grandmother and I was the first person in my household to come to the U.S. So people will say, well, how do you come to the U.S. when your family was in the Dominican Republic? Well, my mother, who I didn't know when I was little, I met her later on. Mm -hmm. She gave me, you know, the opportunity to come here to the U.S. I came to the U.S. And then very soon after I came, I noticed I didn't have a place to live. Like she gave me the favor, like to bring me here. But then that kind of stopped there. (laughs) Like you can come to the U.S., have a better life. Welcome but I didn't her. grow up with her. So I grew up with my grandmother, my aunts and uncles. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, when you are from a different country and you the United States are coming to a first world country, it's like a dream. Right. You're coming and you're building a future. This is the hope that, you know, the family has for you, especially when you come from poverty, mm-hmm. talking poverty to the point where. I was shining shoes. Um, you know, we were selling ice cream. Um, you know, it was very tough uh, to grow up. I went to public school. So all of these things that, you know, it's hard sometimes. And the, you sometimes you don't have any dinner. So coming to the U.S., like, it didn't matter how you sliced it. It was like the best thing that could happen to anybody. That's why people cross the border. Like, mm-hmm. you know, you're looking for a better future. So I'm in the U.S. And it's like, well, these are the cards that I'm handling right i'm here i don't have a place to stay what am i going to do so one woman let me leave her house then i went and slept on the mattress on the floor for two years 
next to a kitchen. Then I went and asked people to let me stay at their homes. And that happened for four to five years because it's very Miami as a city is very expensive. I mean, <laughs> I mean, I mean, it's expensive for somebody who's having a full-time job and has family here. Imagine for you that you have no family. Yeah. Um, so I'm working two McDonald's in two McDonald's. Um, and I am doing sandwiches, cleaning houses, and I'm going to school at the same time because one of the things that I learned growing up is that you need to get an education if you want to get ahead in life. So how do you, I get out of the situation? It's like, I think I didn't have any plan B. Mm -hmm. My plan A was to succeed. And that was my only plan. You know, sometimes you have to cut all the plan B's and C's. You just have to go with what is, what is it that you want? Because whenever I felt like I was tired, I was hungry. I didn't know what to do. I, I was lost. I was like, I came here and I'm going to get an education. Like, this is what I'm here. I'm going to do this. I'm going to tutor kids. For, I'm going to tutor them in math. I'm going to do whatever I need to do in order for me to get ahead. So that was one thing. It was the commitment of that's a goal that I have. And eventually I became the first person in my family to have a master's degree and the first person in my family to have a doctoral degree. From both families, mother and dad, I became the first one. I've got to say, you're just a slacker, in my opinion. <laughs> just like, you know, it's like working two jobs, uh, basically cleaning, like doing like that. No, because this is the thing. And I think this is where a lot of people sort of trip themselves up. Because, yeah, you had a simple plan. Get an education. And everything you did was to facilitate executing that plan. Which, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Like, to execute the plan wasn't easy by all means. Look, working one McDonald's for some people, that's painful enough. But working two McDonald's, <laughs> crazy. And like, you know. That didn't even cover the cost. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm sure. But like the whole thing is you did everything to facilitate that plan. That goal. That plan. And mm -hmm. I think a lot of people uh, sort of, how can I put it? They get distracted with having, okay, it's, they have a plan A, but they've got a plan B, but they've also got a plan C. Mm -hmm. And like, they are trying to push for all of the plans at all at the same time where they're using up lots of precious energy. So they fail to execute on everything. And they wonder why they're falling behind. I love that you mentioned that. I love that you mentioned that because I see that. And I saw it when I went to school and I used to see kids that had parents and a transportation. I used to take buses and I used to like ha take buses all, all the way around Miami. And these kids have a, a car available to them. He, they had you know, their tuition paid, they had a place to stay, but it looked like school was an option for them. It wasn't like their plan. It wasn't their commitment. And one of the biggest things that we can do in our life is have a commitment with ourselves, like with us. We're so easy to commit to other people. Hmm. Oh, I'm going to commit to a marriage, right? Oh, I'm going to meet somebody, marry them and be with them in the goods and the bad days, right? But we don't do the same thing with us. And with our goals. And that is something that I learned how to do. Like my goal was to get an education. And I made a commitment with me that I'm going to succeed in getting that education no matter what. Mm. In the good days and the bad days. Mm. The bad days are not let me go and be mean to myself and tell me how I'm not enough. And I don't have to figure it out. And I am useless. The bad days is a reminder that I made a commitment to myself that I'm going to achieve this goal. Mm -hmm. It's a reminder that there's things that I have to work on. It's a reminder that, you know, whatever I'm doing right now has to be focusing on that goal. That's not saying that, you know, go hustle, 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 even if you're, you know, if... If you're, if you're having bad feedback or you don't feel good in your body or something, maybe that's something that you should look at. But most of our goals, we have to make a commitment to ourselves first that we're not going to let ourselves down mm -hmm. and then we'll be able to reach those goals. Yeah, no, I agree. Like, this is the thing. 
like, yes, belief, commitment to oneself, but also to invest in oneself. Because, like, here's the thing. I would say, like, as you said, people will, like, commit or, like, they'll invest their time and energy in, like, a relationship or, like, the, a, a venture over there. But when it actually comes down to, like, looking at themselves, how can I level myself up as a person, as a human being? They don't do that. They'll rather put their time and energy, money, everything somewhere else because that's what they like, believe in and they fail mm-hmm. to believe in themselves. And it sometimes is, how can I put it, a painful shortcoming uh, for like pretty much everyone. And look, I can't say, I can't sit on some high horse and go, yes, I always invest in myself. I always believe in myself. I come first. No, there's been many a time where, yeah, I've squandered time. I've squandered money on things which don't enrich myself, you know? Mm-hmm. And you have to look at those things and mm. say, and, and evaluate. Do you want to keep doing those things if those things are not leading to the results that you want in your life? Mm. But sometimes we're a creature of habit and we keep doing things that don't serve us because we're distracted or we're looking for that external validation which I think is very um, damaging to like do things to just impress people or to have people say good things about us or for us to feel in a certain group because internal joy cannot be achieved by an external validation. Mm. I have to ask now, what gave you the discipline, the focus to keep on track? Because it's like one of those things to have the mission but so often we get so pulled off that path because, yeah, distractions come. How did you manage to maintain? So I will say that for me, I didn't, the thing about me was I couldn't give up. I just couldn't give up. I felt like I was so blessed to be in this country that, and to have the opportunity to be here. That for me, going back wasn't an option. Like I just had that in my mind. And I feel like if you have a goal and you like failing is not an option, Mm. you will give your, you will try with your best. You will go all in on that goal because failure is not an option. So whenever you fail, it's just redirection. Let me do a redirection. This doesn't work. Let me try a new new avenue. That doesn't work. Let me try a new avenue until you get there because you're all in. You have an all in commitment. And I had an all in commitment when it came to when it came to that goal. And that's how I approach my goals. I have, a, I have an all in commitment. And if it doesn't happen one way, it's going to happen the other way. But we as creatures, as human creatures, I do believe that we have the capability of creating the life that we want. Mm-hmm. And of course, there are things out there. I'm a DNI practitioner, and I know there are some challenges that we face. There is some discrimination that may happen. There's a lot of things that happen around us. But you... Aside from everything out out there, you have to have an all-in commitment to yourself and to your goals. And I feel like once you are able to develop that mindset, you're going to see life a different way and you're going to see your goals a different way. Because achieving the goal doesn't represent anything about you. If I achieve a goal, I achieve that goal because of the woman that I became in my work towards that goal. The, the 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 end of that goal or the result of that goal doesn't mean any it doesn't mean that I'm more worthy or less worthy. Like failing towards something, I don't internalize that as a flaw of me. And I think that's a problem that we have as humans sometimes. We want a goal, we are working towards the goal. If the goal fails, then I'm going to make it mean something bad about me. Mm. You have to detach yourself from the goal and just go in with all in commitment in your quest to achieving it no that is true i agree with you on that but like this is the thing what some people don't realize about when they're going for a goal or they're going for a particular dream or ambition at that they are they don't they forget that they've got to let go of the person that they were to become the new thing because like as you you mentioned it just now but the whole thing is they get super invested in where they are 
but they don't, they fail to like, oh, okay, I need to let go of X, Y, and Z to make me achieve this goal, to get this ambition, to get this dream. And if they don't do that and they fail and they're like, oh, wait, I, I don't understand why I failed. It's because they're not willing to evolve, change into mm -hmm. the new thing. Because when you do anything, it's I, like, if we use the metaphor of a butterfly, like, mm -hmm. okay, yes, for it's a caterpillar. And to become a butterfly, it needs to change. It can't mm -hmm. be, it can't achieve that final form without changing. So it, energy, time, eating, energy, time, eating, then making the cocoon and coming out as something completely different. Mm -hmm. You put, it, put in the energy, put in the time, but they fail to make the cocoon. So I love that you mentioned this because there is an exercise that I always go to to remind myself of where I'm going. Mm. And one of the reasons people, like you said, they don't change is because they're so enamored with the person they have, they, they are right now, right? Mm. And the problem is the results that you have right now in your life, you have the results because of the person that you are right now in your yeah. life. In order to, for you to achieve different results, you have to be a different person, right? If you understand that professional development, personal development comes with change and evolving, you will also thrive. You will always thrive to get out of your comfort zone and do things in a different way because you want different results, right? Uh, one of the things that I think happen when you're working on personal development is that we are so fast to go back and say, well, I have this limiting belief, or I'm used to do things this way, or I think this is how life should be, yeah. or let me make future decisions based on my past life, which is a huge problem. I want to become an entrepreneur, but in my past, I failed. So in the future, I predict I will fail because in the past, I failed. So we have to stop making future decisions based on past experiences. That's something that I learned throughout this process. And another thing, another thing that helps me continue evolving is that I always think of my future self, right? So I always tell my clients, I always say to them, close your eyes and visualize you are a number 10. So who is Marisol at a number 10? That is different for everyone. For some people, a number 10 is doing the Iron Man challenge. <laughs> and we talked about it. <laughs> who knows? I'm not doing the Iron Man challenge. But anyway, I I don't. <laughs> no, I can't it's be doing right. it. For some people, it's like becoming a Peloton instructor. For some people, a number 10 is being a great wife or a great mother or being great for your community, like whatever you ambition, like who is your number 10? And then that version of you at a 10, how does that person eat? How do they behave? How do they interact with other people? How do they make decisions? Do they make decisions out of fear or do they make decisions out of abundance? You have to get into the psyche of your version number 10 of you. And then whenever you're faced with a decision of like, should I try this something new? Should I do this in my life? How should I approach this goal? I always ask myself, I don't want to listen to current Marisol's opinion of this goal. What is number 10 Marisol thinking about this goal? And maybe what number 10 Marisol think about this goal is go for it and deal with the, with getting out of your comfort zone and being uncomfortable. Yeah. I'm going to listen to that even if it's uncomfortable more than I will listen to myself right now because I will always choose something that is comfortable for me. Why? Because our brain are designed to keep us safe and to keep us comfort. So I know that my decisions for certain things are going to be wired to keep me in a comfortable place. Mm -hmm. So I have to think of that future self, future Marisol or number 10 Marisol to make decisions. And then just deal with the uncomfortable, uh, being uncomfortable and understand that being uncomfortable is part of the process. Mm, yes, the comfort zone, uh, the place where many a uh, hope, dream, uh, go and die in a very comfy pair of slippers with a nice warm jacket. <laughs> <laughs> like, I love it. Yeah, hey, it's true though. But like, this is the thing with regards to sort of like, yeah, getting like getting into that sort of a level of discomfort would you like to simply like uh, okay 
number 10 Marisol, here I come, and just jump into it? Or is it a case of you take baby steps? So this is, it depends on the day. For example, today, mm. I had scheduled yoga in the morning. I decided I like yoga and I want to do yoga. And I made the decision that I wanted to do yoga every day. Okay. And when I woke up today, I was tired. Okay. I was very tired. And I was, my mind was telling me, it's okay if you don't do yoga today. You can just do it tomorrow, schedule it later. What's the big deal? And that's when you say, well, my, my I decided on a great state of mind that I wanted to do this. And every time I do this, I feel good. So it's, it comes with this delayed gratification that you may feel uncomfortable getting like dressed up and driving or going to yoga and doing all of that at the, at the beginning. Mm. So you stop doing things for instant gratification. I think about the future. Like once I'm done with yoga class, I'm going to feel so good about myself because I stayed with my commitment and I just went and did it. Like it was a non-negotiable for me. But the beginning is, is difficult because at the beginning, every single sign was telling me, you can stay home. <laughs> <laughs> Look, the uh, air conditioner is low. It's very comfy. Why get up? Nobody's waiting for you. But you have to have this commitment on your growth and on your development. And also, if I didn't go to yoga, I wasn't going to use that as a pity lesson for me when I'm going to say bad things about myself. It wasn't going to happen because I also don't allow that to happen. But you have to want to to you have to want to have this kind of life where you have trust in yourself that if you say you're going to do something, you're going to do it. Mm -hmm. And the more you do it, the more you build discipline. Because now you're not relying on a good moment to do the things that you want to do. You're not relying on a, 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 a good um, motivation talk to do what you need to do. You just do <laughs> that because you already made a decision that that was something that you were going to do in your life. Yes, no, because what I often say is motivation, it's the spark. And basically discipline is the fan, what flan fans the flames, keeps mm -hmm. it going. Uh, yeah, but like this is the thing with regards to yourself. I'm just getting the feel for you in our short time uh, talking. But like one of the things which like made me go, yeah, yeah, definitely drill into a positive vein. Because you, when you went, yes, got to America and everything like this, you went, yes. You saw it as a real opportunity where other people, like, okay, will like either come to America or born in America and go, mm, they like, if they went, what's good about America? They will give you a long list of things which are bad about America. And then they might give you one or two things. And uh, yeah, they go, if you went, is there opportunity? A number of people will like, oh, there is an opportunity. Don't get me wrong. There is circumstances in people's lives where they might be behind the eight ball, where things mm -hmm. are a lot difficult to sort of move on up. Mm -hmm. but you looked at it, get into America, and it's a testament to your mindset to like go, oh, this is an opportunity. Is that how you approach most things? At so I would like to talk on that because I want to acknowledge that people's background and experiences may be different. And I do... I have been through situations that have been very heartbreaking mm. where I have been, you know, either considered for a promotion or not, not based on my capabilities, but based on my look and my accent. Uh, I've seen it when I'm a black Hispanic woman. And sometimes I can see how people look at me and they may say, well, you don't look like the, the, type of people that we usually promote to leadership roles, right? Decision-making roles. So I do see that minorities, Black women specifically, face a lot of challenges in the workplace, a lot of challenges. And I'm not making a statement into like, no, everything, life is perfect. Okay. And, and, you know, I'm not going to be blind to the fact that 
you know, there are some racist people out there that I've encountered in my whole trajectory where mm -hmm. they've looked at me and then, you know, if they want to say an insult or, or they want to tell you, you don't belong, they will tell you in your face, you don't belong. But the problem is aside from that societal problem that we're still challenging and we're still facing, when you come home, when you go back to your room, when you go back to your own environment, are you going to let those things destroy you? Or are you going to let those things ground you and, and, and remember who you are and make sure that your mindset is intact? It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a work, it's a mindset, like you said, because mm -hmm. I've been through situations that are very heartbreaking and I've, I've, said, I've, I've been in situations where sometimes I feel like my identity is falling apart and I don't know like what my role in my life is or what my role in my job is, that will happen because life is not just roses and colors. You may have situations that break you at some point in your life. But in those moments where I was homeless, when I was facing a lot of challenges in my career, mm -hmm. when I was going through a lot of challenges in my life, you still have a decision to make. And the decision to make is, the situation that you're going through, are you going to let those things disempower you or empower you? And then once you decide, then you have to roll with the ball. Because yes, there are a lot of things that may disempower. There are people that are in toxic families that being with a toxic family or being with a toxic member can be very challenging for you to believe in yourself when you have somebody who's criticizing you, judging you all the time. How do you get up in the morning to be like the best self when you have somebody next to you who's telling you, you're good for nothing. I don't know why you set these goals. You'll never achieve that. But then you can either buy into the circumstance and then believe it and adopt it and internalize it, or you can learn how to find peace within yourself and detach yourself from external things and people that may want to put you down. Yeah. How did you learn this? Because it's one of these things where, okay, I'm talking to a very polished, finished like someone who's gone through and like really gone through that journey. But like, yeah, how did you sort of like first encounter it? How did you first discover these vital steps? So I would say because there were some situations in my life, like homelessness or mm -hmm. dealing with somebody who was very, like, let's say I, I went through a terrible uh, situation at my job, at my, my past job, where I felt like nothing that I did Mm -hmm. um was gonna make this person look at me in a different eyes because that person already had their biases against people that look like me and it's, it came from me understanding that I cannot change people like it doesn't matter what you do you can you, you can change I mean as a coach that's what I'm <laughs> that's what I do right when people pay me when people want to work with me they want to change their life but, yeah. they, but, but wait, but the change comes because they make the first step that they want to change their lives. They want, have to want it, you know? So I think that we spend a lot of time in our lives wanting people to be a different way in order for us to feel a different way about us. Mm. If my partner, if my boss, if somebody around me behaves differently, then I'm going to feel confident. I'm going to be motivated to change things. So when you're put in a situation where it doesn't matter what, what, what you try, people are not going to change or people are not willing to look at things your way, then you know that you have yourself and yourself only and you just can rely on yourself. So when I was going through homelessness, um, like I didn't, I, 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 my family, let's say, let, this is a different example, but most of my family were back in the DR. Yeah. It didn't matter if I cried. It didn't matter if I struggled. It didn't matter if I went through this. Like, I couldn't get on a plane and go to see my family every single day. So your support system becomes yourself. This is my support system is my mindset. And then you understand that the more you work on your mindset and the more you work on being self-sufficient, where your joy, your happiness your calmness come from within you mm -hmm. and you don't let things from outside impact how you feel on a day, on a day to day basis. 
I was going to say day in and day out. Day out. Hey, there you go. Any any promotion you can give for the podcast, that's always a good thing. I say that's always a good thing. But like, yeah, like I like what I often see with many people like is okay. You mentioned not having your support met like network around you because you couldn't have your family around this. Like there are people which have support networks and everything like this around them on a day-to-day basis, be that family, be that friends, be that a huge institution. But they fail to sort of, how can I put it, either utilize it or get it focused in on helping them, either helping themselves out or helping them on a greater project. Because I don't know, some maybe it's a mindset thing. Maybe it's a case of they don't actually value what they have around them until it's actually gone. But yeah, I feel I see a lot of people. Uh, you could say in the developed world, what miss out on this? I, you've most already seen this yourself. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, I see it. I see it a lot of times, and that's one of the reasons why I became a coach because I remember when I was moving up in my career and I was doing everything that I was doing. I had less support than a lot of people next to me. And I was the only one like that went and did her doctorates, like from his, from my master's class. Right. And from people that I interacted with, they had like a support system. They have everything. I had a six month old baby when I decided to do my master's and I was pregnant when I was finishing my, do- when I was in my doctoral degree. And <laughs> And a lot of people put it put it off, right? Until the, which is fine. Everybody has their own their own way of doing things. Yeah. But I just had decided, like, it doesn't matter whether I have the support or I don't have the support or I have this. I'm going to finish my doctoral. Like, I'm going to finish my doctoral degree. And I remember me being pregnant. I was like five months pregnant or six months pregnant, big belly. And my fa- we were, I was out with my friends. And a lot of people were thinking, well, you know, it's going to be very hard for you to finish your doctoral degree mm-hmm. when you're about to give birth. Like it's good. And I said, in my mind, I couldn't even register in a scenario where I wasn't going to finish. Like it, it, I, I had already decided I was going to have a baby in the process, but I had already decided I was going to finish my doctoral degree. Of course, I'm not, I'm, I know this is a bold statement because there's people that go through things in there are situations that get you out of the game because I, I've had situations that get me out of the game and then I'm I'm back and, and all of these things. But mm-hmm. I just feel like you just have to make a commitment that you are, I mean, I think one of the things that goes through my mind is I'm here in this earth for a short period of time. We see it as a long, long, long time. But I'm like, I can remember yesterday I was five. (laughs) And I'm in my 30s now. So I will say I am here for a short period of time. I want to enjoy, accomplish, live as much as I can. Like, why not? Why will we rob ourselves from that that opportunity? But this is the thing. What I would often say, uh, well, what I often say and what I often see is, yes, People, when it comes to life, everyone thinks we get an extra tomorrow every single time. No, like it's don't. a guarantee. Mm-hmm. But like the whole point is life is finite. Life will come to an end at some point. And if there are certain things you want to do in life, trust me, if you don't get focused, if you don't get to work with regards to whatever you want to do, It will, like, time will run out eventually. And, you know, like, this is the thing. It's a huge testament to yourself to, like, go, okay, I'm doing a master's. Yeah, I've got a baby. Oh, wait, I need to finish on my doctorate. Oh, I'm pregnant. (laughs) Like, that is huge to get that done and accomplished. But you understand the value of that time. And, Mm -hmm. like, yeah. I don't, I have to ask, how do you structure your day to get stuck, like to get this all fit in? Because look, that's a challenge in itself. 
look, I look, I have recently become a father of a young girl. And uh, like, yeah, let's just say they take a lot of time. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. yeah. How do you manage it? So this is uh I will tell you one of the books that really changed my approach to time. Mm was the five love languages book. It's not a time management book. It's a book about love, how people love. Mm -hmm. And the book outlines five ways that people receive love. So not the way that you give love or that you accept love, but other people, right? So some people like words of affirmation. Some people like quality time. Some people like... Uh, physical touch. One of the biggest thing I believe in the more I read about it, that kids understand love is by quality time. Mm -hmm. They like to spend time with you. You can tell your kids that you love them, but if every time the kids come to you, you're busy and you don't have time for them, they will understand that, you know, little by little, they will not hear those words anymore because you're not dedicating time for them. Mm -hmm. So, in my mind, having a one hour, two hour times with my kids where I'm not interrupted, where my attention is a hundred times focused on them is much more valuable than spending eight hours with them where I'm constantly working on another thing or my mind is absent somewhere else. So I feel like the moment that you start valuing your time into like, I'm reserving these five hours, to work on my book, to be with my kids, to do this. And I'm going to dedicate these five full hours to this. Not only will you feel accomplished at the end of the day, because you're going to say, I was focused on doing this. And, and I'm going to tell you, I'm a person that gets distracted very easily. I always tell my husband, I think I have adult ADHD because I'm all over <laughs> the place. But I had to make a conscious decision that I'm with my kids, I'm with my kids. Mm. When I'm with my husband, I'm with my husband. One of the things that me and my husband worked in in our relationship early on is that our weekends are sacred. I don't schedule anything during the weekend. Nothing. It's very rare that somebody will send me a message. It doesn't matter who it is. Let's do this on the weekend. I don't do them. Mm. Why? Because this is the time that I have full time with my family and I'm going to dedicate the whole day of spending it with them, having experiences with them, cooking for them, watching a movie with them, all of that with them. So if the week, during the week, I'm only able to dedicate an hour every single day, they're looking forward for that weekend mm -hmm. because they're not losing me on the weekend. So you just have to understand, like, what are your, um, what are your buckets in life? Is it being a parent and being a professional, being an entrepreneur, being a friend? Maybe it's your relationship, whatever that is. What is your four or five most important things in your life? And then you have every week to dedicate time to those areas in your life. If you care about friendship, then make a list of all of your friends and make sure you're contacting them and you're checking up on them. You cannot say, oh, I care about my eating healthy, let's say. Then what are you doing about it? Like how, how much time are you dedicating to that? Because you know that you care about those things if you didn't get in time for that. If you say you care about eating healthy, how much time are you dedicating researching food, doing meal prep, making sure that you are eating the right food? So I always say, if I care what I do, my actions will tell you what I care about. Mm. And that's the relationship I have with time. And I said that I care about working out and being active. So if I care about that, I have to wake up and do yoga or I have to wake up and do something because I said that I care about those things or that has a priority in my life. So you have to remember, like, what are your four or five priorities? If it's your partner, you have a husband and you care about your husband, what are you doing every single week? What actions are you doing that show that you care about him more than just saying that you care about him? Yeah. And yes, that's my currency. My currency is time. <laughs> no, 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 because like this is the thing. Uh, as you said, with regards to, yeah, there are some people which spend eight hours a day uh, with their kids and stuff like this but they're so distracted and like this will pull them away from them and that will pull them away from them but they're not present 
in the moment. They're not present in that time, that precious moment of time uh, for their kids, for their significant other, for like any project they might be doing. I think that's where so many people fail because they are not present, because they are distracted by phones, teeth, mm-hmm. everything. What, there's a million and one things, a myriad of things pulling our focus on a daily basis, Mm -hmm. that quality time. And I don't think it just goes for kids. I don't think it goes for your significant other, but it's like everything is quality time because it's so precious. Mm -hmm. If you're not really sort of like being present with that time, it gets wasted so easily. And, you know, I think there's a book called like 40,000 Weeks, uh, basically, that's the lifetime of a human being, 40,000 weeks. And then it's like, yeah, off this mortal call we go. Mm-hmm. And, and if you sat down and went, yeah, how do you like, and you ask people in the next life or just before they leave, did you spend your time in quality or if it was flitters away? And mm-hmm. I don't know, like, I would say a lot of them might say flitters away rather mm-hmm. than the former. Yeah, you know? because a lot of people are living in autopilot. Mm. And that doesn't lead, it's just the same thing over and over. And we're so afraid to take charge of our time and our lives. Mm. So afraid to say no to things that don't serve us. So afraid of what are people going to think if I'm not, you know, if I say no to these things, but every time you say yes to something, you're saying no to something in your life. Mm. Every time you say yes. So the people that have a prof- problem with people pleasing, all the yes you're saying to all these things that you're showing up that you don't even care about, those are things, those are time that you will never get back. And these are times that you can use it on things that you say you care about. So I think this is a big problem that we have with people in general is that we say, oh, I care so much about my health or I care so much about my family. I care so much about this. Mm. But you're not saying yes to the things that you say you care about. You're saying yes to all the distraction. So when we talk about priority management, right? Priority means you have crystal clear, you know for sure what you care about. And this is your currency is time. People say, oh, time is currency. Time is currency. They use it so, you know, so, so easy. But how is a currency? How much time are you putting into the things that you care? And every week, every month, I have my calendar and I look at my week and I say, okay, when is time with husband? When is time with my clients? When is time with with my children? When is time for my health? When is time for this? I have these categories. And then whatever is left, this is what I'm going to use where people say, you know, they invite me to things, but you have to put yourself first. And if I haven't eaten healthy or I haven't done exercise, I'm not saying yes to other things. Mm. I'm going to say yes to myself first. And then I can say yes to other people. Uh, like it. No, I do. And like, this is the thing. I think, oh, excuse me. I think with regards to a lot of it, I think people are afraid to just take responsibility for themselves and their lives. And this is the reason why they mismanage their time and go on to autopilot. Because when you're taking res- like responsibility, uh, like, okay, if things go wrong, uh, there is no one else to blame but mm. yourself. But like the whole thing is, if you just focus on the like things going wrong, you fail to see if things go right, if things are successful, if you achieve that mighty goal and you are victorious, triumphant, that's also down to you mm-hmm. as well. But it's a case of, do you te- like take responsibility and potentially get those victorious days or mm-hmm. like knowing that you can fail at times, but it's all part of the cycle. You sometimes succeed and you sometimes fail. And like, if you told a, like a small child who's trying to learn to walk, if they can, that yes, uh, like, yeah, with an adult mindset at times, that kid would quit after like, yeah, Mm -hmm. about 10, 20 times. No, I can't do it. Mm -hmm. But they get up, fall, get up, fall, get up, Mm -hmm. fall, get up, fall. Until that one day where it's like, oh, standing 
and then they mm -hmm. take a step, then they and fall. And then you feel confident. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but, but you know, the problem is people, adult people, they want to feel confident first and then mm. do the action. Yeah, but it doesn't, but like, when you go, it doesn't work like that. Look, put it this way. I am going to run the London Marathon. We talked about this beforehand. Mm -hmm. But like, this is the thing. I haven't, I can't tell you how many runs I've done that to like get me up to this level of training to just run 26 miles i've most probably run maybe hundreds of miles to like get to this point where i'm like okay yes getting myself and you said shape. just 26 miles like it's nothing <laughs> well like, hey I, I love it i love it but it's it's it is 26 miles but yeah but i have to run hundreds of miles like dedicating myself to say between anything from 30 to 50 miles a week to like do the runs and like yeah some people might go if you're out there and go that's too that's not enough well that's what i'm doing right now so like yeah but it takes all of this and like when you get people like going yeah i want to be a millionaire it's like going, okay you have you taken the time out to like go out there train practice invest in yourself like yeah when, sell when, have you gone yeah. out there and practice selling absolutely you have to sell yourself sell your services sell your philosophy <laughs> yeah all of these skills where yes many a victory lies many a failure lies and like yes sometimes disaster and greatness but yeah i want to be a millionaire have you have you started the journey or if you have started the journey you might be on day one and you might go, but I've been doing it for years. But, you know, you might be still on day one. If you haven't decided to take the lessons which are out there and learn from them, yeah, it might be years, but you're still on day one. Practice your craft. Mm -hmm. Get the lessons in. Get the training in. Do the mm -hmm. work. And, and, yeah, see how far you can go, I say to people, you know? Mm -hmm. It's like, you know, one of the things that this reminds me of is the law of attraction, right? But people love to read on the law of attraction and say, <laughs> and say, oh, you know, if I can just think it, you know, I will become it. And I will say, but you know why the law of attraction works? It works because it makes you focus on one thing, what you want, mm. right? So we're looking at the cognitive aspect of the law of attraction. You're looking at it more consistently because you're repeating it. The more you repeat it, you visualize it. The more you visualize it, you feel it. Mm. Once you feel it, you go and you're motivated. You take action. At the end of the day, you take action. You may say, it's, oh, it's just the law of attraction. Well, you can sit and just think about it. Yeah. But the law of attraction works when you start taking steps towards it. And it works because you are thinking about it. You're visualizing it. That's why when you go to personal development seminars and you go to mindset seminars, when I, I hold seminars too, the, the goal is for you to be crystal clear what is it that you want, remove the limiting beliefs, visualize it mm. so that you can take action, consistent action, day in and day out. <laughs> there you go, third time. There you know, go. What this is a I great say? name. Yeah. You have a great name for your podcast. <laughs> well, what can I say? What can I say? Because like with regards to the law of attraction, and like this is the thing, there are people would say it's pop poppycock, uh, using a, like a very old English thing. Poppycock basically means BS. <laughs> like, yeah, so right. Now, Colin McGregor, a UFC fighter. I don't know if you know him. I I'm I'm not sure. Irish, like Irish UFC fighter. He fought Mayweather a couple of years back. But like the whole thing is, he goes, Yeah, the law of attraction. Ah, oh, I love that book and everything like this. And you looked at him and you like went, okay, Colin, you like the book, you're like, great, everything like this. But it's you just didn't read the book. You actually went to work. You could see uh -huh. his training. You could see he was like fighting people. You, like every day he was in the gym making it happen. So when he wanted the big house, wanted like the fancy cars, all of this, he worked his butt off, but he used it as a focusing point. And I mm -hmm. think so many people, yeah, the law of attraction, but they fail to act. Mm -hmm. uh, that basically... And that's where they sort of like go, why? Why do you, like, it's like, 
all you need to do is put the action into that. It, you might not get everything you want, but you'll be a damn sight closer to it rather than like sort of like pulling on little flowers, wishing, uh, you know, on a day to day basis. Mm. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it's like, um, I, I think of the law of attraction, I think of all the seminars that I've done or that I've been a participant in. in and I also think of this book that is very famous. I don't know why it's not coming to my mind. Um, um, the, one of the oldest books in personal development that is about becoming a millionaire. It's about money. And think you'll book, be rich or something like that. Yeah. Think and you'll be rich or think yeah. and grow rich. Right. And you look at the exercises, the exercises are about writing your goals every single day. <laughs> every single day you have to write your goals. It doesn't matter yeah. how daunting it is. They're like every day you say how much you want to make, mm -hmm. what are you willing to do? To make it well some people may i'm going to be a speaker i'm going to be a coach i'm going to do these products every day you have to write it so what's going what do you think is going to happen after you write it three four five six days you're not just going to write it you're writing that you're going to do a course or you're going to be a speaker you're going to put it to work so you think and grow rich because of course if you think about it, if you can visualize it it can become become a reality but you also because the more you think about it the more motivated you will be to make it happen mm. <laughs> so all of these think and grow rich and it is a great book and a lot of people have said you because of this book I've been able to generate all this in my life of course you've been you this type of books and these personal development books and these type of podcasts and people that are like this type of content, it gives you an opportunity to think about yourself, to think about your goals, to think about what you want and the actions you want to take to get there. And these type of contents are very good for people, whether that's book or podcast or shows, because our lives are, are so interrupted every day with different things, the news, things that are going on in the world. Uh, people calling us all the time that you need a time to recenter and say, well, okay, this makes me remember like some goals, people that may be listening to this podcast, they may say, oh, I remember, I always say I want to do these goals, I should take action on it. And that's why they say, even if you read the same lesson from personal development, keep reading it, keep listening to it, because one day it's going to hit you and that day you're going to take action. Mm, yeah, no, I, I like it, I like it a lot. Ah, uh, now, one of the things I'm curious about, because like this is a thing, you have like you've been in the game of self development and personal development for a nice little chunk of time now. Now, when you like, has leadership always meant the same thing to you? When you first like got like, like leadership to like present day, has is it? been static or has it changed it has changed a lot so and when i did my master's on leadership ah <laughs> so okay when you did your master's on leadership what like where did you see leadership then How so before so it has evolved so much because i remember growing up a leader was somebody who was in charge right which mm -hmm. is more as a manager you grow up and you see people that are in charge of things ch in charge of a country in charge of a company, mm -hmm. a politician, you think, oh, a leader, they're making decisions, right? Then you go, you're growing up and you think of leaders like those people that are, you aspire to be them, right? They just have something about them, the way that they talk or how, how much charisma they have, mm -hmm. the way that they behave, the way that they dress, their personal brand, that makes you look up to them and all of a sudden you think that that's the person who's a leader or a person who has a lot of influence, right? Their, their position allows them to have influence. So you think that person is a leader because he can make things happen. Me as a black Hispanic woman in the workplace who faced a lot of challenges will say that my leadership definition has changed a lot. And that's why I am writing the book called Leadership is a Responsibility because I saw people that look very admirable, that they had charisma, that they were, they draw people in with their speeches. But then behind closed doors, they were the worst. <laughs> they were terrible. They were toxic. They were gaslighting. There's sometimes some of them were racist. And that was behind closed doors. 
So a lot of people didn't know they had like this different persona when you talk to them one on one. So I don't want to follow people that in front of the TV or in front of a podium, they look very respectable. If what if you don't value people and you don't care about the people that you're leading. Mm. So for me, leadership is more of an act of service. You are in a leadership position because people trusted you to take care of them. So what are you doing for the people that you're serving? How are you making their lives better? How are you having a positive impact in their lives? If I can see that you, as a result of you being a leader, people are better off, then I will respect you as a leader. I don't care about the rest. You may be an introvert. You may be somebody who's very shy at public speaking. But maybe, even though you're very shy at public speaking, you ha- you change people's lives for the better. When people are under your leadership, they believe in themselves. They believe they can do great things. They get up from bed and they believe they have a purpose. So as long as you are able to positively impact people's life, then I w- you will gain my respect as a leader. <laughs> Mm, interesting interesting because like this is the thing uh, yeah i think with regards to how can i put it? the way society the world sees leadership it's like yes uh that strong take charge personality and with regards to like some leaders like it's the hollywood leader if you get what i mean mm-hmm. like the but, show yeah but it does it doesn't take into account where there are some leaders like on sports teams where they're leading from they might not be leading from the front but they're leading from behind or they're mm-hmm. just leading by that example to just be that good well to be that overall great team like teammate but you don't really see that much in like sort of movies tv shows it's like yes like it's always some hard like hard edged person be it a man, be it a woman, and it's that's the way it is. And like this is the thing. Um, so often, like the like the most like our contact with the most prominent leaders where for each individual is mothers and fathers, but yet that's never sort of put in a positive light when it comes to the sort of Hollywood. It's like, yeah. Some kids got to always rebel against it, uh, like against their parents, because, yeah, that's all it's about. With no real like sort of sense of focus about it at all. But that's where sometimes I think that's where most leadership, where we see it, comes from on a day to day basis. Yeah, I think the way that people have chosen leaders is outdated. Mm. It's based on their external. Uh, characteristics and 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 behaviors that are more about the show, like you said. Mm-hmm. Oh, that person has a great posture, has charisma, looks very presentable. They should be the leader. Why? Because of personality traits. Because they're extroverted. Oh, they take can take on a, a room and talk and be loud. That person has you know leadership skills, and I'm like, no, that's not leadership. They're loud. <laughs> Uh, you may have a great leader sitting amongst you amongst us we may have a great leader sitting amongst us but we don't see it because we're so focused on this external characteristic and not the impact on the lives of people indeed indeed i have to ask like yeah with regards to what you're doing now where would you like your journey to take you in the next say five years So in the next five years, I would like my journey to take me somewhere where I'm making an impact on young lives. Mm -hmm. Young lives in terms of our future generation. Uh, There has been a increase on suicide and depression. And I would like my mindset work, my leadership work to impact these young professionals that are entering the workforce Mm. to lead in a responsible way and to believe in themselves, to believe that they have the opportunity to create the life that they want and to change 
the world for the better. Yeah, because like this is the thing. I'm always curious. That's great. I I I like that. But like with regards to like much of this sort of young generation coming up uh, now, or who are like just in the work, like entering the workplace at this present time, um, I sometimes look at them like there is an air of a lack of resilience in those in that upcoming generation. But it's not, I wouldn't say it's purely their fault. I would say currently in the world today, there is a lack of real good leadership in, in our politics, like in our workspaces, like in our like in our like education institutions everywhere. And I think that's kind of knocked on uh down the generations to where, yeah. The current generation's not as resilient as generations before. And it just is this sort of weird cycle, if you get what I mean, which is just feeding into each other. That's why we need to talk about mindset and we need to talk about resiliency. And we have to do this type of work. It's absolutely necessary. But it's not only that. It's also, it's not only about the leaders. Mm. Well, it has to do with the leaders. Like everything goes back to leadership, right? But, you know, these gadgets and these apps and everything so instantaneously. <laughs> it's, it's like, you know, I remember watching TV when I was little and I had to wait for commercials. <laughs> <laughs> and I had yeah. to wait for the next show, like the next season. Now you can just binge watch a season of one movie, of one, 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 one show in one sitting. Mm. Like you don't have to wait for anything. So... You know, the way they, the people grow up now is very different from before. Before you had to wait, like even the way that you watch shows and the way that you order things and the phone and, you know, the cord phones. And you had to like run and not know who's going to be on the other line and open the door. Now it's totally different. <laughs> I know. I hear you. I hear you. I hear you. Uh, yeah, because like, yes, uh, sort of instantaneous, like instantaneous gratification mm -hmm. is like, it's a real thing and um, yeah trust me no, like yeah if like if you didn't show up for a tv show when i was a kid religiously at that time it was gone and yeah if you missed it you'd have to maybe wait maybe six months for the repeat mm -hmm. and if you missed the show you miss the show sometimes <laughs> yeah uh yeah if and just live with it yeah <laughs> it's like if the video like oh or worse still if you set the timer and someone's unplugged the video recorder. Uh-huh. <laughs> yes, yeah, like if you had video recorder. Well, yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> I didn't have any video recorder. I didn't have even like just so you see, like I feel that the way I grew up, I had to hustle and be resilient my whole life. So and it wasn't because I wanted to be, but because there was no other option. Like what else, like what else are you going to do? Um and I feel like sometimes that, you know, may, may have impacted also how I see life in the way of like, you just don't give up on things. You just keep at it until it works. I hear you. I hear you. Now, I have to, like, I have to reveal before we go, like, yes, I am a being of supreme cosmic powers and I can grant you one wish, one wish only. But before you even start or anything, because look, you're crafty, I can tell, I can see it in your eyes. Now, you can't wish for many, like, you can't wish for extra wishes. You can't wish for infinite wishes. You can't write down a long list of things on a piece of paper and go, yeah, I wish everything on the list comes true. No. And yeah, you can't wish for world peace or COVID to disappear because that is just no. Now, if I could grant you one wish, what would that wish be? If you could grant me one wish, I would say for, oh, this is a very tough one. Because I think one, one wish I will, there is a lot of them, but one of them will be for everyone to have health until the end of time. No, you can't have that. That's just too much like world peace. No. <laughs> okay, so it's not for everybody, for me, for, for my for my family. 
well, for the people that I so yeah. people that I love, I would say health. I see I see that mental health and physical health, because you know it's very heartbreaking when you want to achieve things in your life, but then you have a mental like health limitation. Let's say you're you're suffering from depression, anxiety, or you have a physical limitation. So I want people to be able to achieve whatever they want. And one of the things that can enable you to do things like that with less limitation is your health. Okay. You know what? I'll get working on that for you and your family. Um, <laughs> no worries. Can you tell the lovely people how they can find you out on these interwebs? Yes. So you can find me on LinkedIn. It's mm -hmm. Dr. Marisol Capian. And also you can find me on Instagram at Prof Capellan. I usually post content in Spanish on Instagram. And I'm so happy to be here. I mean, the pre-sale of my book is now available and I need to sell 200 copies and I'm fixing my relationship with sales. <laughs> <laughs> so while I'm fixing I, my I, relationship I'm with sales. I'm getting that right now. <laughs> yeah. 200 copies, come on. Come on. Right now. So I'll be sending you the link, but yes, uh, that's what I'm working on right now. I'm trying to get 200 sales if, like, as fast as I can so that I can fund my publishing. Um, but it's a great process. It's a great learning process, and I'm very honored to be here today. Perfect. So thank you for coming on today. Uh, it's been a pleasure and an honor, a joy to have you. Thank <laughs> you for having me. Ah. Uh, no worries, no worries at all. And I'd like to say thank you to you, my friends, my life warriors, for sticking with us to the end of the show. Please stay well, stay safe, be awesome, be excellent, be fantastic. Be all the positive bees you can be in this world and then some. And yeah, you get a thumbs up from Marisol. It's all good. Have a great one, guys. Yes, peace. And we are...